What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Look, got the chesty on. You normally see me doing that with fishing, but for this week's cooking deal, I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna do, remember in the last video we talked about the uh, the turkey brine bucket that's available from Pit Boss exclusive at Academy Sports and Outdoors. I'm gonna show y'all how to utilize that whole kit that's in there. Um, now, instead of a turkey, I'm going to do chickens. Um, why am I doing chickens? Because I can do chickens in a little bit less cook time and prep time overall um, than I can a turkey. And with the schedule that we're on with the boys, um, that that's everything. So uh, I'm not gonna not gonna get too in depth of a big long intro. Uh, thank you guys for coming along. Look, I will say this: we have hit 15,000 subscribers. Our friends over at Academy Sports and Outdoors have given me four $250 gift cards that we're going to give away to you guys celebrate give, hitting 15,000 subscribers, hitting over a million views, all the things to celebrate the success, celebrate you guys, um, and to continue to help grow this channel and grow what we're doing here. But without further ado, let's get started with it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go over here on my outside stove and I am going to light this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and turn my burner on, then I'll tell y'all exactly what I'm doing. You can see it with the chesty. We are just going to let's make sure he's open already. I thought I'd check this earlier and make sure I had gas. And I do. And look at that. Turn that down a little bit. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dump four cups of water into that pot. Right here, I got four cups. Boom, boom. We're gonna dump four cups into there. And we're gonna try to get that brought to a bowl. Uh, not try, I mean, we will get it brought to a bowl for sure. Um, and, but in that four cups of water, the perfect turkey brine kit right here uh that comes from pit boss so we're gonna dump this in this guy right here into that bring it to a bowl we're only gonna bring it to a bowl for five minutes once it's been at a bowl for five minutes we will then take it and we're gonna dump a gallon of cold water i'll remind you all this as we come to it but it's pretty simple it's just a lot of prep work to make sure that you build the right brine that you're doing the right things if you've never brined a bird I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, my spatula, here it is. So we got the brine mixture in there. We're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna swirl it all around, get a nice slurry. It's gonna smell unbelievable. Hopefully one of these days GoPro will come out with a smell of vision on here. Um, but what you're doing whenever you're brining these birds is imparting a lot of juice into the meat because poultry has a bad tendency of drying out when you're smoking. So, and that goes for any poultry, turkeys, chickens, doesn't really matter. Do you have to brine them? Absolutely not. If you have the time, should you? Absolutely, you should. So, nothing to it. We've got our brine started there. We're going to bring that to a bowl. Uh, like I said, we're only going to let it boil for five minutes. Five. Then we're gonna kill the fire. Um, and then we're gonna add a gallon of cold water to that. Once we add that gallon of cold water, uh, we will then take the whole pot and everything to the fridge to let it cool completely. The reason you want it to cool completely is so that your turkey, chickens, whatever you put in it doesn't keep cooking. So once it's cooled completely, we'll take it out. We'll put it in a bag with our birds and we'll be ready for the smoker after they soak in there for a while so let's do this let's have some fun we're going to get over there and work that brine if y'all hear something don't worry it's just the baby monitor i see Brittany's in there doing something right now but you can see what we're doing here as you can see we're the bowl i've shown it on the other one but now we're just letting it go till the timer goes off 
Uh, then we're going to turn the, we're going to kill the fire. Um, I'm going to move the pot off of the hot burner, put it to the side. And then I'm going to add my gallon of water, uh, cold water. Not, and when I say cold, y'all, it doesn't have to be like chilled. It just needs to be room temp. You know, just doesn't need to be hot. Like, let's just put some cool water in there. And then we're, because that'll help cool this off a lot quicker because you don't want to put a hot pan, hot pot in your refrigerator anyway because this needs to go and cool off completely before you put the chicken in or turkey, whatever you decide. All right, we have got our gallon of water added. You can see. Go in here getting all the stuff off the bottom. Now, all we have to do is let that cool. We want it to cool all the way down. Still going to be a little warm. So, the first thing I'm going to do before, let's go find my lid and I'm going to let it cool out here. All right, lid installed. Our brine is done cooling. Brought it back out, sat it over there on the cool side. Um, so, a couple hours, not too bad to get it down to where it's cool. But now we're going to do the next step, which is um, get our chickens in the brine. So in the package, you'll see you get this big brine bag, huge like Ziploc, but better bag. What you want to do is you'll come here with this. And I forgot something, I'll go in and get it. But you want to open him up. You want to take your chickens and place them inside of them. Now look, I've got my chickens right here. Say why are they in paper towel? Every time I get chickens or pork or anything, I always clean off the outside of them. I don't know why, I just do. I mean, it's just something I do. I don't. To me, it seems to yield better results to get whatever they were packed in off of them. Um, and I'll wash them and then I'll pat them dry. But these have been washed, now they're being, just getting ready to soak dry. But what I like to do is I'll come in here now and I'm gonna place these birds, in theory, breast side down. When I say in theory, doesn't matter as long as they're both going the same way. So, so I got the one in there. Let's slide him over. I want to get them as close to each other as possible, preferably right beside each other. That way I know which way I got him laying, just like that. Because okay. you want the breast to be down. Back up, breast down. I cleaned up my workstation so I'm not getting potential salmonella everywhere. I've used bleach wipes on everything. The same uh, deal that I filled it with, Pyrex dish I filled it with, I'm now going to take my Pyrex dish and I'm going to start scooping until I get to where I can dump. I, I don't trust myself to dump this by myself so I'm just going ever so gently add the liquid into the bag you know these birds are together they're about nine pounds that doesn't mean nine hours it really means like time and a half of one so it's really going to be probably about seven hours six and a half seven hours i found has been my best results if you don't have enough liquid to completely cover it, it's not a huge deal. Get you some water straight from the sink, straight from wherever. If you don't, if you want to use bottled water, use bottled water. But just get you some water till you get them covered. See, I've just about got those covered. I'm just trying to play Jenga with them to get them to stand up until I can pour the rest of this in there, which I think I can do now. But you gotta be quick because it'll fall on you. And let's see. If I stand that up, that 
is about as completely covered as you can get. That's leaning now. But trust me, when I take all the pressure off of it, this a wee little leg bones is out. I am gonna try to get as much air out of this bag as possible. It makes a better seal on the bird. So you see, I just keep pushing air out till I get to the very end here. You're not gonna get all of it out, but you can get a lot of it out. What I'll do is I'll take the corners of these bags and I'll tuck them down the side. And I'll have to do this again once I get it to the refrigerator. But look at there, no leaks. But you can tuck them in there. And that'll lay, you see the bird completely covered. And now they're gonna go in the fridge. I'm gonna wait for a little bit because I'm gonna try to do this on schedule with the boys. Um, but once they go in the fridge, they're gonna be there for about seven hours. So I'm gonna do it, like I said, I have about eight pounds. Yeah. Actually, it's more like eight and a half, right at nine to uh, to do. You think that's nine hours, it's really not because each bird's like, one's four and a quarter, another one's like four and a half, 460, I don't quite remember. So I'm gonna do like time and a half. So about seven hours of soak time. I'll try to put those in tonight time where in the morning I get them out. Um, and then y'all will see the next step. So then now we wait. That's the thing about cooking these kinds of things. They're labors of love. They're labor intensive. If you're looking for something quick to do, this one ain't for you. But I'll tell you what is quick about it. It's convenient that you can get the whole kit. One thing from our folks over at Pit Boss exclusively at academy sports and outdoors so if you got an academy near you go check it out they'll be in store starting november the first for now let's go put these inside put them in the fridge actually we're going to put them outside in the outside fridge and again contamination i'm weird now I, I used to never even think about this kind of stuff but i don't want that stuff around my boys uh bottles i don't want it around Brittany's breast milk and all that kind of stuff so um i'm gonna go slap him in there um and then in the morning whenever uh, the boys get up eat do all their things and get settled back in i'm gonna come out here i'm gonna throw them on that pit boss and we'll go from there but until in the morning we'll see y'all and good night all right guys we are back uh to finish up the chickens slash turkey slash whatever you want to call it um we're doing two chickens instead of a turkey but they have brined all night or not all night, but a lot of the night. Um, and we're about to put them on. That way we can enjoy them on this fabulous day. So first things first, I'm going to turn the pit boss on. I'm going to set it to 275. So it can do its thing. It can light while we're getting these ready. Check them out. Ooh. Okay. Ain't that pretty? Ain't it pretty? First thing we're going to do, we're going to take the chickens out of the brine. Um, and we're going to sit them in this pan. And then we're going to wipe them down. We're going to dry them off. We're going to pat them dry. Um, let's see. Let's get the bird out. We're going to let him hang for a minute. That's a lot of it. So now we'll put him in the roasting pan. Same thing with his compadre here. And they'll continue to drain in the pan. I'm just trying to get most of it off in the bag so it's an easier cleanup. All right. So we're gonna set it over there. And here's our chickens. We're gonna pat these babies dry. Oh. And now I'm gonna pat down this side while I got them up and dry. So you're not trying to get them fully dry, just pat them down, get them tacky. Nothing major. You could take them now and like spray them with olive oil. You could baste them with olive oil. You do a butter. You can do a hundred different things to give your rubs and your seasoning something to affix to. Uh, I like to just go through here with a little yellow gold. I know it's weird, but I'm not going to do much. I'm just, again, I'm just trying to make a, oh. Okay. Just trying to make a little, uh, little layer for it to stick to. 
Then I'm going to rub that in. See, it's not much. When I tell you, you don't taste it. You're not going to taste it. It's just a barrier. It's a cheap way to do an egg wash, if you will. It's uh, an easy way to do, uh, like spraying it with oil or butter or something like that. Just gives it a nice base for your seasoning and your rubs to do. So we're going to use the seasoning from the kit on one bird. And on the other bird, we're going to use a buddy of mine, old Bart's whipping chicken rub. You just want to rub it in nice and even, nothing. Nothing crazy. See there? Look how thin that is. You won't even know that is there. Mm -hmm. So next step, what I do, see this stuff right here? You can make it yourself, you can buy it. It's in stores everywhere right now because of the holiday season coming up. But I'm gonna inject this turkey. I'm gonna hit it in a couple of places in each breast. I'm gonna hit it right in the thigh joint on each bird and uh but it just it adds another layer of juice to your bird you don't want to poke a bunch of holes in it so you want to do like one and what i like to do is like come in from the top side go pretty deep and then you'll just watch it plump up see there it goes and now i'll move it in the same hole then go in a different part of the breast same deal one hole, try to do it with as few holes in the meat as possible. Oh, I went through the bone there. That's fine. Trial and error, boys. And see, so you see that side plumped up really nicely. Now just do it again. I go on each side of it. So, got it all the way in. Nice and plump there. Go down that way. Come up this way. There we go. I didn't go through the bone on that one. But you'll have a little run out. Uh, and that's fine. It's based in it too. So Now I'm going to go in down there in the legs and the thighs. You won't really get a whole lot in there because there's a lot of bone. But I am going to blow them up. That's one bird done. Now let's do the other one. And then that's it for the marinade. So now all we have left to do is cover and rub. Like I said, we're going to do one of each. The pit boss ought to be about ready over there. So this is the kit rub that comes in the bucket. Uh, your turkey bucket that you can get exclusively at Academy Sports and Outdoors with pit boss. Then we're just going to... Again, this was designed for a turkey, so you probably... For a chicken, I might mean, go use quite all of it. Go with this guy, old Bart's whipping chicken. And let's just put it all over everything. Same deal, pat it in. Make sure it gets a nice little stick to it because that's going to help create that crust. Once that skin tightens up, after being on there, just pick him up. Stand him on his head. And then the same thing across the back. And we're going to lay him down. And we're going to let the rub get tacky. Let it sit up on there. And then once it does, we're going to transfer onto the pit boss. If you haven't already, check those out. Look, Groove, Zeus, Ring. You can cook. You can do whatever you want to in it. You don't have to worry about it. So now that we've got them done, the pit boss is at 275. We're going to take them and put them on there at 275. And we're just gonna cook them until the breast and the thigh both hit 165. Now the thigh can get a little bit warmer than that, that thigh area. Um, it doesn't have to be at 165. The, it, it can go to 180 and you'll be fine, 185. I've done it a lot of different ways. Um, but the breast has got to hit 165 internal um, just to make sure that you're covered. You don't get anybody sick 
and you'll want to put your probe in the thickest part of that breast to make sure that that is 165. And the cool thing is with a smoke it out with that pit boss competition, I can sit inside and watch football and I'm looking at my probe on my deal while the boys sleep and then even while we're feeding them and all that, I don't have to worry about anything. I can do it all from my phone, check everything there and know that I'm good to go. So um, really cool feature on these competition series pit bosses is that smoke it out do everything from phone i can turn it up i can turn it down i can do whatever i need to do but i've done enough chickens and turkeys no let's just do it at 275 let it bump what will happen it's going to be a nice slow cook um and you'll just see that skin just get really tight on there when i put them on the grill i'm going to put them with the back down so the back towards the heat so that it is actually taking the brunt of the heat from the breast i don't i personally don't want the breast taking all the heat the breast is the hardest part of the chicken to get right um that's why you see all these guys <coughs> me included cook with thighs because they're a lot easier to get right not to mention they just taste better but and i used to not think that i used to be a chicken breast guy but man that thigh is hard to beat but um you can see here get a little bit more personal look with them you can see that rub has kind of changed colors a little bit um I see now on that angle I missed a little bit so I'm going to come back and hit that one more time but you can tell that the rub's starting to stick to it so it's time to take it over to the pit boss it's going to go right here Second one going on is along with the Pit Boss kit seasoning. And we'll have a little taste test when we get done and see which one is best. Look at that. Perfect. All right. There we go. Now we just go log into the Smoke It app, keep up with that while it's cooking. And we don't have to do anything. Watch football, watch the boys, make sure they're fed, happy, everything. So we'll check back in when it's done. And we'll go through the final steps. All right. We're here. We're done. Almost. See, I got a little distracted. Kids happen. It's actually at like 168. Um, but it's time to take them off. And then the hardest part of all of it. Let them rest. But let's grab them off of here. And let's, let's see how we did. Oh, boy. Look at that, would you? Yeah, I believe that. I had one that was stuck. Mm. Look at that bird, would you? Oh, oh, oh buddy. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, look at him. You can see on this guy, some of the marinade got the, or the injection got the bubbling out. But look at them things, would you? Golly. Oh, let's get that side profile. Mm. Look at that. Ah, don't that make you want some? Now I'm going to go get some tinfoil, wrap them up. And let them rest. The hardest part of smoking meat, letting your stuff rest. Unbelievable. Because I, I, I want to tear into it. But show you some tinfoil, let them rest, and we'll show you when we cut into them and where we're at. Well, folks, they rested a little longer than 30 minutes because two little terrorists woke up. That's them. They were hungry, so they got fed. Mama, how you feel? I'm super tired. She's tired. We're all tired, but we got to eat. So let's cut into these here chickens and give it a proper taste test. All right, let's, let's take this wing right here. Okay. Well, I'll tell you this, it's tender. The bone pulled out of it. Mmm. 
hot. That's good. Mama, you want to try a little? That good? Yeah. I thought it was good too. Okay. That's chicken one. Chicken number two. Let's go fair. We ain't gonna cut the wing off one and cut like a thigh off the other one. Let me get up under there. There we go. That tender too. Bone just pulls off of it. Let's see here. Mm. All right, Mom. Give you the same piece you just had. Huh? I'm ready for dinner. She ready. Let's just do one thing real quick. Cut off this little corner of breast right here. Oh, look at all of it fly out of there. Here you go, Mom. This is a real test. How good is that? Yeah, <laughs> Let's cut off the corner of this breast. Goodness. Good? Mm-hmm. Mm. Try him. But that one. Yeah, it's really good. There you go. You heard it here first. It passes mama's test, which is really the only test I'm worried about. So there you go. Get you a pit boss brine bucket. Make you some chickens. Look at all the. You see all that? Look at all that juice. They didn't dry out. They were done correctly. Follow along. Thank y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see y'all next time. We're out.